Hey, what's up? Tony from LearnAutoBodyAndPaint.com and what I want to talk to you about today is sandpaper for color sanding and buffing. Alright, uh, I've been getting some questions on the YouTube channel and all that stuff. So, what's different about this video is we're just going to talk about it on whiteboard. I'm going to do a little bit of drawing examples. Uh, but if you want to see the true sandpaper grits and the physical tools and all that stuff, check out my other videos on YouTube or on my website, LearnAutoBodyAndPaint.com. We have a ton of more information uh, that goes over everything related to auto body and custom painting. So just be sure to do that. And also, after watching this video, if you're on YouTube, click the like button below and click the link in the description. It'll take you over to the website where you can get a free 85 page auto body and paint manual uh, that has everything you need to know about auto body and painting in text format. I think you're really, really going to like that. So uh, here's the main question that I'm getting from a lot of people. Uh, what is the best sandpaper grids to use for color sanding and buffing? Okay, uh, so let's, let's just start, say that you finished painting your car or your touch-up panel. Let's just say it's a, a complete job you just did, right? And uh, you have a little bit of paint texture on it and a little bit of orange peel and all that stuff. People are asking, what is the best sandpaper grits to cut that down flat with and, and start color sanding and buffing? Okay, so uh, some people uh, start with a thousand grit actually, okay, 1000 grit. I personally don't like it uh, unless you're cutting, you're trying to cut out a big sag, all right? A sag is like an area where when you spray, uh, you have a big, heavy, saggy, clear coat area. Not really a run. A run is a drip. You can see more of a drip, but a sag is where the whole clear coat just, it's so thick in one area, it just starts pulling down, all right? So sags, yeah, I would use about 1,000 grit or 1,200 grit to flatten that whole area out. And I'm going to show you a, a little example of what I mean by flattening out uh, the clear coat before you buff. Okay, but I normally like to start with about 12 to 1500 grit. Now, when sanding, you could dry sand or you could wet sand. Uh, there's a couple of different techniques. If you're a beginner, if you're new to this, I recommend wet sanding because you have more leeway for mistakes. You're not going to cut as fast. All right, um, and it'll, it'll take a little longer time sanding it, wet sand by hand with a block, uh, than DA sanding it, dry sanding it with, uh, you know, with a DA. I like to use about a 12 to 1500 grit dry. This way, while you're sanding, you could basically see that you're cutting to a flat surface. All right, you're gonna see the orange peel and the paint texture flatten out and disappear while you're dry sanding. And it's easy because when you're wet sanding and you have all the water on the panel, it's hard to see if you're flat or not. You have to get a chamois, dry it off, make sure you're in the sun or blow on the panel to, to make it dry and evaporate so you can see if you're cutting enough in one area or not. You know what I mean? But with dry sanding, all you have to do is just dust off the panel and you could see if it's cutting flat or not. That's the cool thing about dry sanding. Um, I have complete step-by-step -step videos in the VIP training site on this whole process, both wet and dry sanding. I show you how it's done both ways. Uh, so if you're experienced, uh, you're more confident with the DA uh, and with just doing body work and not afraid of messing up, dry sanding is a quick way to cut down all your panels. This is what I do now. And then after that, uh, I go over the whole thing, I wash it down, so to say, with 2,000 grit, uh, wet sand, all right, just to smoothen out the 1,500 to 2,000, and then you could buff on top of that, okay? So that's what I like to do, all right? I like to dry sand DA with 1,500 grit or wet sand. If you're not experienced, I would go with 1,500 wet sand, and then move down to 2,000 grit wash it, like get it all flat, with, you know, smoothen it down, make sure it's, you're going to be buffing over 2,000 grit. Uh, and then you go ahead and use the one, two, three stage uh, uh, buffing steps that we show you exactly how to do uh, on the website. So if you check out the website, uh, check out the VIP training course, it's all in there. And uh, we have thousands of members that love our trainings and full support. So it's not like you're alone anymore. You're going to get complete support and uh, you're not going to be alone with your projects. That's the cool thing about it. 
All right, so 1,500 down to 2,000 and buff. I got a couple of comments, well, one comment from one guy uh, out in Europe somewhere. He's like, he was like really bugging me and saying, 2,000 grit, what am I, lazy? Am I lazy for buffing over 2,000 grit? He was like, no way, I would never buff over 2,000, always over uh, 3,000 grit. And let me tell you something, I've been doing this for a long time, since I was 13, I'm 30, 17 years I'm in the business, all right? I've hung around auto body shops, we have an auto body shop, and uh, it's just unheard of. Nobody buffs over 3,000 grit. Maybe in Europe they do, but you're not going to see any difference. Okay, you could buff over 3,000 grit or buff over 2,000 grit. You're not going to see a big difference. You're, well, you're not going to see a difference. Period. I can guarantee that. After you color sand and buff over 2,000 grit uh, with your wool pad, then your foam pad, and do the glaze and all that stuff, it's going to look like glass. And my projects prove that. I've been, I've had cars and car shows. Uh, taking awards and all that other stuff and I know how to put on a gloss check out some of my other YouTube videos of the completed projects that we did and uh, you'll you'll be amazed all right so 2500 to 3000 is overkill don't worry about it you don't have to sand to 3000 grit weird kind of guy and you want to get really really tedious then hey after you 2000 wash it down with 3000 but I just I'm just saying you're gonna be wasting your time 2,000 grit is plenty, plenty, plenty fine to buff over to get amazing glass finish results, okay? So this myth is busted in my book. Hardly anybody ever does this. It's a waste of time. Don't even bother getting 2,500 to 3,000 grit sandpaper. You do not need it. 2,000 is the most you want to sand and then you buff on top of that, okay? Uh, okay, quick, quick little demonstration. Uh, I just wanted to show you what I, what I mean about flattening out. So think about uh, looking at a panel, all right, sideways. So say we just painted a hood of a car and we're looking, looking on the hood, you know, like this at, at the texture of the paint, okay? What you're going to see is it's probably going to look something like this, okay? Okay, that's what it's going to look like. And <clears throat> when you're color sanding and buffing with your, when you're color sanding and buffing with the block here, let's use this as a block, right? You're going to be sanding like this, right? So let's just say we're sanding like this, okay? You're sanding, you're sanding, you're sanding, and you're going to notice that the tips of this this texture, orange peel, right? You start to cut it, right? You start to cut down after you sand. Right after you fully sand flat, it's going to look flat, just like that. You're not going to have this rip, this little texture, orange peel or the paint texture, whatever you want to call it, on your paint job. It's going to be flat like that. That's what I mean by flattening out your clear coat before you buff it. You want to make sure it's flat. You want to make sure that after you sand it, your panel here is a matte color, a matte flat flat color, okay? So if you put it in the sun or if you look at it, it just looks dull looking, all right? So when it looks dull looking like that, uh, once you have it down to like 1500 grit or 2000 grit, you're ready for buffing, all right? You're ready to put your compound on it, you're ready to put your wool pad on it and start buffing out your panels. All right, so I hope you learned something from this little presentation. If you like this video, please like it share it, put it up on a website or whatever you want to do with it on YouTube, comment below. Also, don't forget to click the link below if you're on YouTube. It's going to take you over to the website, right, where we have a complete blog post on this video, uh, where you can also, on the sidebar, okay, on the sidebar, if you're on the website now, right, look on this side. You're going to see a little book. It says put your name and email to get the book. This is where I can send you the book, all right? So put your name and email in and I'll email you this copy of 85 full pages of auto body and paint material right to your email box right now. So do that right now. And uh, if you're on the blog also, comment below. I would love to hear back from you. If you're on Facebook, comment. And uh, I can't wait to talk to you about more other cool videos and uh, all that stuff about auto body and paint, all right? So check out the YouTube channel. We have tons, hundreds of videos. Uh, check out the blog. We have hundreds of posts. We have all kinds of information. And also, 
Don't forget to check out VIP. All right, VIP is amazing. We have thousands and thousands of members that are members from all across the world uh, that join us every day and we help them take their projects up to the next levels and get real results with their DIY experiences and uh, it's pretty amazing. We have a private Facebook group, private forum and uh, everybody's in there every day conversating, having a good time and uh, uploading pictures and all that fun stuff. All right, so again, it's Tony from LearnAutobodyandPaint.com. I hope you liked the video. I'll see you in the next ones. Ciao.